good morning. morning. It's such a wonderful, cool morning. (laughs) The mass intention is for John Little, requested by Barbie Cancellieri. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin the second week in this wonderful and holy season of Advent, uh, we are called to continue responding to prepare our ways so that the Lord may find us ready. And this calls to the change of our lifestyle that will suit according to God's values and virtues. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged lands shall be made a plain, a a rough country, a broad valley. Then, The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs and carries them in his bosoms, and leading with ewes with care. 
the word of the Lord. I will hear what God proclaims, the Lord, for he proclaims peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation to those who fear him, glory dwelling in our land. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. Kindness and truth shall meet. Justice and peace shall kiss. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and justice shall look down from heaven. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. The Lord himself will give his benefits. Our land shall yield its increase. Justice shall walk before him and prepare the way of his steps. Lord, let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, 
Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the Gospel of the Lord. All of us this morning, we drove here on the roads from different homes, different neighborhoods. So we do understand very well in our lives that the roads are very important, the highways, the streets, because they connect us from one place to the other. Imagine if we had like a tropical storm that's when we hear a lot of messages coming, be careful, don't go through that road because there's a huge tree which has fallen uh, across the road. So that tree becomes an obstacle for every, every person to pass through that road. And that is the message of this beginning of this second week of this holy season of Advent. We hear from prophet Isaiah. God is saying through the prophet, prepare the ways for the Lord. The voice crying out in the desert, prepare the ways for the Lord. And he was told what to do, filling the valleys and the mountains and the hills must be made low. Because if the mountains and the valleys are in the, in the road, or on the road, they become obstacles. Nobody could go through those roads. What are those roads for us as Christians that the voice is calling us to prepare? Our relationships with one another, those are roads, those are highways, those are streets. Our relationships must be links that connects us in, with one another. Could be in marriages, our friendship, parish family, our neighborhood. Wherever we are, we have to have those good relationships. They are our highways. They are the roads that Christ, I mean the voice is talking about. If our relationships are broken, then there are so many mountains and valleys between us. Then there are obstacles in our lives. And if our relationships are broken, how can we have a good relationship with Christ? How could the Lord Jesus Christ come into our hearts, into our lives, if our relationships are broken? So that's the importance of that voice crying out in the desert. Prepare the way for the Lord, because the way for the Lord is through our loving relationships, is through our peaceful relationships. That's how God, Christ connects with us. He connects us with the good relationships that we have with one another. So in this week, second week, we reflect each one of us. Just like we heard the last message last week, be watchful, be alert. This is now what it means to be watchful, to see how our relationships are today. You know, sometimes it's hard uh, to reconcile with other people. 
because of maybe what they did to us. It's so hateful, we are feeling it, but the voice is telling us we have to fill in those valleys. We have to bring the mountains and the hills low. Nothing is impossible with God, so nothing must be impossible with us. If we failed last year to reconcile with others, let's do it today. Let's do it this year. Let bring the change in our relationships. That is the way we can welcome our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the way we can celebrate worthily the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. If our ways, our connections with one another are not there, broken, even what we are preparing for will be meaningless because Christmas or birth of our Lord Jesus Christ is about mending our relationships. The reason why he came was to again lay down the highway that we have a connection with his father. Remember through the scriptures, Adam and Eve, through disobedience, they brought, they brought back the mountains. They built the valleys between God and themselves. And therefore, there were so many obstacles. But Christ came so that those mountains must be leveled. Those valleys must be filled in. Now it is our work. It is our mission. Today, we are going through a lot of challenges, even in our relationship. Sometimes through politics, I hear sometimes families who are failing to sit together and eat because they are divided in political affiliations and all that is going on. That is not the voice we need in this world. We need a voice that brings people together. We, bring, we need the voice that brings love and peace and justice. Those are the ways that the voice is crying out for us. And because of that voice, we need it. You and I, we are like John the Baptist. We have to continue with the same voice. Maybe we have good relationships ourselves, but we know others who do not have those good relationships. And we have to help them. And that voice must be strong in this world so that the voices that come to divide, the voices that raise prejudice or violence must be suppressed and be done away with. So our voices must be strong as Christians. Prepare the way for the Lord. And let us show the people what that means. St. Peter is talking about what God thinks about a thousand years and a day. He said, for God, everything is the same. A thousand years is just one day. A day is a thousand years. What St. Peter is saying, do not get tired to do what is good. Do not get tired even to reconcile with others, to try to bring others into a good relationship. Remember, we were baptized with the Holy Spirit, and that spirit must help us to have a strong and courageous voice where there is something wrong, we have to point it out so that the goodness must start. Our voice always should be prepare the way of the Lord. When we do all these things, as we have heard from Isaiah, then the glory of God will be revealed and every human person will see it and they can see it only when we love one another, when we live at peace, when we live in justice, when we care for one another, we care for those relationships, then people will appreciate our faith and what we believe in. So this week, let's reflect on our relationship. If you know somebody who does not talk to someone, reach out. You are the voice in the desert. Help those people to come together. If it's us, let that voice come to us and reconcile with our brothers and sisters so that when Christmas comes, truly we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ.
Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one God, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom we have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy God, the Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the world to go to come. Trusting in God as our shepherd, as our father, we present to him our prayers, our petitions, and all the needs of the people around the world. That the life of every Christian will be rooted in the truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and so give vitality and hope to this time of Advent, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders in the church, lay and clerical, will have the humility of St. John the Baptist to kneel before the poor and distressed, serving Jesus in them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That children in our country and around the world will be safe and happy, secure with food, shelter, and education, and surrounded by love during this time of holidays, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are distressed through the COVID-19 pandemic and by war, by famine, by religious persecution, and being on death row around the world, will receive that consolation which comes from the heart of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an easing of tensions within governments and among nations, may we find effective ways that can lead us toward better communication and deeper resolutions. Give courage to those who must find ways to change so that everyone may live in peace and harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessing of this Advent season upon the sick, the addicted, the dying, and the grieving, and for all who face this holiday season with sadness and suffering, help us find ways to support them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that all our faithful departed will enter the place where righteousness and peace will be the eternal home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all our personal intentions and prayers, we offer them to God in silence. Almighty God and Father, as you receive our prayers this morning, spoken and unspoken, we pray, Lord, that you strengthen the faith in each one of us, that our voices may have the, the spirit of the good news to all people that we meet, and that we may do this with courage and not in fear. Grant all this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we will watch for that day, may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of us. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Gracious, make holy these gifts. We have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Eat this bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anthony, our patron saint, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the order of bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious, to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you as they are passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let you say amen. Let the church At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <clears throat> Told into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and be gracious to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now let us safely offer each other the peace of Christ.
take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter the land, but on say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
that song sends us. Really, we need the hand of God to be a very powerful voice in this world that we bring our love, unity, and peace. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Announcements? John. Good morning. Uh, just like a friendly reminder, as you know, our toy drive is going on. You may donate your toys over at the social hall. The toy party will be December the 19th, beginning at 10 o'clock. It will be the drive by format. The parents will bring the kids by, drive by, and we'll uh, give the toys out in front of the social hall. Uh, we're asking for toys for kids appropriate years from 12 and under. You may also donate gift cards, cash, and, uh, and you can go online and do cash. Uh, see the same after the website. Thank you very much. Thank you. I wish I can be nine today. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. As Father said, you need to check your mailbox because uh, glad tidings are being placed in those each week, so please check your mailboxes out there. And then on behalf of the Women's Council and the Prayer Spa Ministry, I want to tell you thank you, thank you, thank you so much. The bake sale and the Christmas attic was a huge success given this COVID time. And with so sparse of a church, we, we really did come forth and show uh, your love for the school. So I just want to thank you. Uh, today, uh, the Women Council will be meeting at 2 o'clock. I mean, I'm sorry, at 1.30 in the social hall. All the ladies are welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of St. Anthony University. Our Advent program is going on right now. We have Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. and Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Everything is virtual, and then we post the videos. There is no excuse. You can't miss us. And we really want to join in praying and learning with you this Advent, so I hope you'll join us. And then in January, Deacon Steve Olson is teaching a three-week class on Fratelli Tutti, the new encyclical by Pope Francis. If you sign up for the class, you get a copy of the encyclical and a syllabus so you can study hard for January. So I hope you'll start your new year studying in a saintly way, and we hope to see you on Zoom soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in case you haven't seen anything on Servant Hearts, uh, on Tuesday is a holiday of obligation, Mass, Immaculate Conception. So we are going to have Mass on Monday, uh, 6.30, that will be the Vigil Mass. And then on actual day on Tuesday, we'll be having Mass at 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. So please choose with the time that is convenient to you. Uh, of course, on Monday, we are going to have the regular Mass at 11, and then the Vigil Mass of Immaculate Conception at 6.30 p.m. Uh, I will just ask you to sit just for a minute. I have a letter from the bishop that I want to read. Uh, as we all know, it's almost like two years uh, since we heard uh, uh, the child sexual abuse allegations against uh, our bishop. Uh, Bishop Robert Gilgrimone. So we have a letter from him which all of us priests received on uh, this past Friday. My dear brothers priests, as we approach the end of what has been an extremely challenging year, I am very pleased to be able to share some good news. I recently received a letter from the Papal Nuncio stating that the Vatican has determined that the sexual abuse allegation against me has no semblance of truth and is thus unfounded. While not surprising to me, 
It is very welcomed news as it confirms what I have adamantly stated. I am innocent of the accusation that was made against me. I want to take this opportunity to extend my deepest gratitude for all your encouragement and prayers during this difficult time. Your support helped me tremendously as I waited for the allegation to go through the thorough review process. I find it appropriate that I am able to announce the conclusion of this canonical matter during the holy season of Advent, during which the hope of all God's children came to be realized by his chosen people in the birth of the Savior. As we prepare for the celebration of that wonderful event, let us rejoice in Emmanuel, God with us. In the Lord's peace, most Reverend Robert E. Guglielmone, Bishop of Charleston. So that's the good news for the bishop. So we continue to pray for him. Uh, there is also uh, the law enforcement investigation going on, but it doesn't look as I think it will come to the same conclusion. So we continue to pray for him and support him and support our church. May we please stand. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. As we leave today, uh, let's leave today. As we had said, I can't even walk now. Let's say, Fitzy. Will he fix it for you? Fitzy Jesus. Amen. Fitzy Jesus. Fitzy. Fitzy Jesus.